Good morning. We're on day 68 in our journey with Jesus, and we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 23, verse 28. This is where Jesus is on his way to the cross. But Jesus turning to them, that is, this great crowd uh, of people and of women who were mourning and lamenting him, he was saying to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, stop weeping for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. The women are convinced that his death is a terrible tragedy. And there are many that would say the same. Jesus was a good teacher. He didn't deserve to die. But just like now, then, they did not see that his death is preordained by the plan of God to atone for our sin, the sin of the whole world. Even though Jesus is going to be crucified, he is alive and a life-giving tree. Um, and that's why we see in verse 31, for if they do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? You see, Jesus stood for the nation. He was with the nation. And so in that sense, Jesus, who is the, the word, the, the bread of life, and so the light of the world, um, he gives life to Israel and to the world. He is the light of the world while he's there. But what happens when it's taken away? And Israel then will no longer be green, but will be dry. And that is a, an image that, that demonstrates a tree that is dry is fit and ready to be burned. And so he lets them know he's not dying for himself, but he's dying for others. So he redirects the women to think about the judgment that's coming upon Jerusalem. And that if they don't truly repent, if Jerusalem doesn't repent, Israel doesn't repent, if we don't repent, there is a judgment that is coming and we will suffer terribly for it. Remember, John the Baptist said to the, to the crowds who came out to be baptized by him, who warns you to flee from the coming wrath? So and it seems to be that there is always, for every generation, there is a, a judgment that is even awaiting uh, us. We need to, to listen to God's word and respond. And if we don't, there is judgment that is imminent. And in this particular case, the Romans are going to come. Forty years after Jesus' death, they're going to come and lay siege to Jerusalem and destroy it. Um, and so this would result, of course, in terrible suffering. And Jesus links this, this event, with their rejection of him. So as dry wood, the city is close to being, being burned. Um, and we see that a uh, number of places uh, here. Um, the judgment to come will be harsh as Jesus blesses the barren woman. That's often what takes place in terms of times of war. You can't protect your children. The, uh, the enemy often doesn't respect either the pregnant woman or, or innocence like children. And so Jesus is basically saying it would be better for you to be childless. The nature of war in the ancient world was brutal towards men, women, and children. The Romans later show no mercy when they crush Jerusalem. In fact, mil, uh, over a million Jews are crucified on, on crosses themselves. Um, the Jesus has already wept over Jerusalem because of the coming judgment. In uh, Luke chapter 19, verse 41 to 44, we see that, um, that when he saw the city, he wept over it. And he said... Uh, if only you had known in this day, even you, the things which make for peace, but now they've been hidden from, from your eyes. And then he, he, he gives, demonstrates the imagery of war that's coming upon them. But his love and compassion is seen throughout Jesus' interaction upon this first sight of Jerusalem that, that in Luke chapter 19, 41, but also in his own crucifixion. Uh, even though they did the worst thing that they could do in terms of killing Jesus, the Son of God, Jesus prays that the Father would forgive them. Um, in, in Luke chapter 23, verse 34, he says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what, they're, what they are doing. Rejection of Jesus, the Savior King, the one who has laid his life down for the world. It has serious consequences for the indi individual, but also for the nation. Being, to being forced here to contemplate judgment can turn many to seek the Savior. Uh, when there's war that's coming upon the land, um, and when like soldiers, for example, are 
are being sent out to fight. There are many that turn to God in repentance. When you are faced with possible death and that you will have to stand before the judge, it can result in many people turning to him and asking for forgiveness. And I think today is no different. God will use the events that we're living through and the difficult times and trials that have come upon us to turn people back to him. Uh, we need to be ready to give um, people an answer, what they need to do. And it's the same today as it always has been. We need to turn to him, repent, um, accept him as our Lord and Savior and live for him. And we know that he will give us the Holy Spirit. He'll give us all that we need to live for him in this day. And that's the gospel. Jesus is our ransom, our substitute, um, our mediator. He is our righteousness. He's the one who reconciles us with God. He makes all the difference in our lives individually and in, our in, in the world as a whole as well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for dying on our behalf that we might have life. You didn't die for your own self, but you died for us. And we rejoice that you've now given us life that we have the opportunity to be in right relationship with God and to receive all that you have for us, all the blessings even that, that come as being part of your, your family and your children. We thank you that you love us that much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.